Their sap poured forth as it were their blood, and was spilled upon the ground. But Ungoliant sucked it up, and going then from tree to tree, she set her black beak to their wounds, till they were drained, and the poison of death that was in her went into their tissues and withered them, root, branch, and leaf. And they died, and still she thirsted. Well met, friends. Yoisten here with another epic character history for you all today. But this character isn't one who inspires or leads, but one who consumes and destroys. We, of course, all know about Shelob the Shadow Spider, the same creature that Samwise Gamgee bested in combat. But what of her great mother who began her kind? Ungoliant is the oldest and greatest of the spiders in Arda going all the way back to before the creation of the world. Her origin is from the outer darkness, or the void beyond the world, and outside of the halls of Iluvatar. Not even the Valar know of her true conception, but I believe it is possible that Melkor created her with his discord among the music of the Ainur, or that her spirit is truly an enigma without creation, alike to Tom Bombadil. Melkor called upon Anguliant as he began his rebellions against the Valar, and thus she dwelt in Atumno with him. She didn't do anything notable until after the fall of that fortress and the imprisonment of Melkor by the Valar, when she fled to the southeast of Valinor and Amon, to a ravine called Avathar, south of the mountain Hyarmentir. There she was able to hide from the Valar and the hunters of Arume, as this was a freezing land where the Valar did not go. And it was there that she assumed the great shape of a giant monstrous spider who consumed all the light she could find. Her best weapon was called Unlight, and it aided her in hiding, as she was able to spin many webs of this gloom from the light that she consumed. Light was a paradox for Ungoliant, as she hated light, but desired to consume it for sustenance as well. It was in this ravine that she stayed for many long years, feeding off of light and growing even larger. Eventually, after Melkor was set free, the Vala wanted vengeance against his captors, so he went south to find Ungoliant. He found her somewhat larger and more powerful than before, and he requested her aid in his retribution. Melkor planned to destroy the two trees of Valinor that gave off light for the world, as they were ultimately the preludes to the sun and the moon. Though Ungoliant was tempted by this offer, she feared the power of the Valar, but Melkor offered to sate her hunger with anything she wished, if she would help him. To this end, she agreed, so the two went to Azelohar, a mound that held the two trees of Valinor. During a festival in Valinor, Melkor stabbed the two trees with his spear, and the spider drained the sap and went to work with her poison. After consuming the light of the two trees, she drank and emptied the wells of Varda that housed the rains and saps of Laurelin, the gold tree, and Telperion, the silver tree. Ungoliant and Melkor fled, using Ungoliant's unlight to hide them from Arume and Tolkas. These two went over the grinding ice into Middle-earth, towards the ruins of Angband. The spider had grown to such a horrific and monstrous size that even Morgoth, as Melkor was now named, began to fear her. She still desired more, however, wanting Morgoth to fulfill his promise, and Ungoliant demanded jewels from Morgoth that he had stolen from Feanor after the destruction of the two trees. Morgoth begrudgingly relinquished the lesser gems, but hid the Silmarils in his right hand as they continued to burn him, as they were made of almost pure light. Ungoliant desired these three gems that held the last light of the two trees, but to this Morgoth refused. Thus the great spider attacked him and weaved dark webs, the Dark Lord cried out in pain, which was heard by Morgoth's Balrogs under Angband. These beings of shadow and flame came to their master's aid and tore apart Ungoliant's webs with their whips of flame. In fear, the giant spider fled south, and though the Balrogs prepared to pursue her, Morgoth called them off and bade them return with him to Angband. The land that this encounter took place in would be known as Lamoth, and it is said that if a being screams in this area, Morgoth's voice would echo back in the surrounding hills. Now I imagine that Morgoth let Ungoliant go as he knew that she would flee and no longer pose a threat to him, but to other parts of the world. 
Some measure of destruction would continue on her part if she was left alive. And so it was that the great spider fled to the dark mountains and glens to the south of Dorthonion, north of Beleriand. These mountains would be called Arid Gorgoth, the mountains of terror then after. Ungoliant mated with lesser beasts, and her offspring were evil like herself, though lesser in stature. And one of her daughters, the last daughter, would be known as Shelob the Great, who would live in the Ethel Duath, or the Mountains of Shadow surrounding Mordor. While other lesser spawn of Ungoliant went to Mirkwood, and these are the same spiders that we see in The Hobbit. Ungoliant's true fate is left ambiguous, as it is possible that she starved to death in hiding or in some desert place. In an alternate sketch of Arendil's story, it is suggested that Arendil himself slew her in the south. But I believe that the most canonical explanation may be found in the Silmarillion, where Ungoliant's never-ending hunger drove her to devour herself. Quote, when in her uttermost famine she devoured herself at last. End quote. Throughout their quests of vengeance, Melkor and Ungoliant served to portray many of the seven deadly sins of Christian origin. Where Melkor serves the motifs of wrath, envy, and pride, Ungoliant serves as lust, gluttony, greed, and sloth thus making these two demonic characters all the more evil when examining them through an archetypal lens. If you want to explore this further, more information may be found in The New Tolkien Companion and The Silmarillion, both of which are books that I would highly recommend checking out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this character history and analysis. I really had a great time exploring this character's lore. If you had a good time as well, please hit that like button, as it really helps the video and the channel out immensely. Let me know your thoughts about this demon of the ancient world down below, and share this video with a friend who you think might enjoy it. As I follow the latest poll on Facebook to see what order I should make the videos in, you have selected Galadriel's epic character history for next weekend, so I'm excited to make that too. Join us on Facebook and our new Twitter through the links in the description below to vote on video topics and contact me more directly with anything related to Tolkien's Legendarium. And please subscribe to stay up to date with my future videos. Thank you all for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my friends.